Welcome back to my channel. My name is Robin. I garden in Zone 6 in Northwest Connecticut. So thank you very much if you're a subscriber already. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing. Um, hit that like button and hopefully you'll see content uh, that you find interesting and useful in your garden. So I garden in Zone 6 in Northwest Connecticut, like I said. And one of the things I wanted to talk about today is something that um, my I, I talk about with my clients often. Um, is how to garden, even if you're over 65 or if you're 18, whatever it is, if you don't have a lot of time or if you are have mobile issues. I've had two back surgeries and a knee surgery. Um, so uh, these things can get complicated and can get challenging and you still want to be able to garden. So how do we do that? Well, uh, one of the things is to plant things in succession that don't need constant care. Don't plant a shrub or a perennial uh, that needs constant deadheading or cutting back. Um, plant things that have a long season. So one of the things I thought we would talk about today is some combinations, but I also wanted to show you, um, I have a client who is um, in her 70s and has hired me to make the garden less work. Um, and that's something that even if you're just a busy mom um, is applicable to pretty much anybody. I, you know, I don't think even even avid gardeners like myself, I don't want to be outside uh, deadheading Coreopsis every single day. This is one of the plants I've talked about uh, before. Um, I love them. They're really pretty. I don't grow them. Um, there are annuals, um, you know, that sometimes take more care than others. They want a lot of deadheading uh, to keep going. A lot of the new varieties of plants don't require deadheading. The, you know, like a lot of the petunias, the super, uh, super tunias and things like that, um, the spent blooms fall off. So these are things we want to look for when we want to lessen the amount of maintenance that we're doing in our gardens. Um, again, we want to be doing fun things in our gardens, but we, and we want to enjoy the gardens, you know, that, that bench that's out there that like we never sit in, um, <laughs> things like that. We want to sit out there with a glass of wine and enjoy. Um, we don't want to just always be working. So let's talk about some maybe um, plants that might work in your garden. Um, one of the things you need to remember, no matter whose videos you're watching, you need to take into consent, consideration, what is your zone? What are your growing requirements? I live in a town that is now rated um, as a zone six, but where I live in this town is basically sort of on a mountain. It's very windy and I swear we're still a 5B. Um, there are times when I mean, even this, even this morning, this is uh, Tuesday, the 21st of February. Um, and we have snow here. I, I saw the traffic reports this morning. There was no snow like in any of the traffic reports, but we have snow here. So it's often colder here and it's pretty windy where we're sitting on this mountain. Um, so that's something you always need to remember. Think about your zone. Do you have sun? Do you have shade? Um, my garden has gotten shadier since I put it in seven years ago when I moved here. Um, trees have grown up. I've planted some trees that I wanted for shade also, um, but I have had other trees that have come down that have put more sun in different places. Um, so these are things that we all need to consider. So let's uh, look at some examples of things that we can do to make gardening accessible and easy at any age. Again, whether you're 18 or 75. <laughs> so let's start off by looking at an example. Um, this client has a big coos of dogwood, had a lot of azaleas, some overgrown rhododendrons, um, some overgrown junipers. So here, trying to get some less maintenance, I've added some catmint, I've added some bulbs, I've added plants, I've added a small hydrangea that don't need maintenance. One of the easiest ways to get a no maintenance garden is plant some tulips or some scari or some daffodils, plant bulbs. They take care of themselves. You plant them once and forget about them, especially things like daffodils, muscari, fritillaria. 
You don't have to plant these every year. Tulips you might have to plant every year, so don't choose those if that's too high maintenance for you. But they come up yearly and they provide a really nice bridge between winter and the spring summer flowering um, plants. If you follow me at all, you know my absolute favorite is catmint. Uh, Nepeta Walker's Low is what I have planted all over my yard. Here you see it with Allium Globemaster. Um, again, two plants that absolutely require no maintenance. You can cut catmint down if you want after the first spring flush, um, and it will bloom again. Um, but it is such an easy growing plant. Um, it attracts the bees and other pollinators. Um, very low maintenance will resist deer. Uh, zone four through eight can get like two, two and a half feet tall and wide. Blooms from like April to September. My all time favorite. I probably use it in every single garden. Um, and I suggest it to most clients because it is so easy maintenance. If you're looking for a tree, I could suggest a nice small tree called a Cornus Cusa, Cusa dogwood. Um, zone five through eight gets uh, maybe 15 to 30 feet tall, blooms May to June, but it doesn't just bloom May to June. You have the beautiful white flowers in the spring, you have berries in the fall, and you have gorgeous, gorgeous color in the fall. Um, look at this against the Amsonia. That red is just beautiful. It attracts butterflies. It's beautiful all three seasons. And of course, in the winter, you just have beautiful branch branching structure. Um, again, it grow takes like medium water, full sun to part shade. Mine's probably in a little bit too much sun, but other than that, it's really doing well. The next one that I probably would suggest um, for really easy maintenance is the Cotinus Smokebush. Royal, this is royal purple that I have. I have two of them. They tolerate clay soil, zones four through eight. Again, they require no maintenance. They have that gorgeous, rich maroon color. Um, they grow really great in full sun. Um, they do need some good drainage, but they have no serious insect or disease problems. You can coppice them if you really want to, if it gets too large, um, which means basically cutting it all the way down. They can get 10 to 15 feet tall and like 15 to 20 feet wide, but they are basically, again, no maintenance. They provide a gorgeous color. Another one of my absolute favorite shrubs is the Nine Mark. I have quite a few. I have Summer Wine, I have Copertina, Diablo. I have a lot of other ones. I have some green ones too. It's got a great exfoliating bark. It's got really beautiful flowers, white flowers in the spring. Um, it has beautiful uh, fall color, zone three through seven, full sun to part shade, tolerates clay soil. Um, they're just... Again, such easy maintenance shrubs. They require nothing from me. Uh, mine have been here for seven years. I have barely touched them at all. Another category um, favorite shrubs would be spireas. Now I just did an entire video on spireas, so I won't get into it too much again. And there are tons and tons of varieties. Um, Again, they look great from the spring when they start flowering. They Most of them have really beautiful fall color. They're easy to maintain. You don't have to do anything to them. Zones four through eight, basically, they love full sun. They resist deer. Um, and, I mean, some of them, you can cut cut them back after the first flush and they'll they'll rebloom but it's not necessary they require nothing they don't even really need any fertilizer so the whole category of spireas are on the top of my list for easy maintenance plants when it comes to um, perennials I'm not sure if it gets much simpler than sedum um, this is autumn joy there's autumn fire there, there are a lot of different varieties there are a lot of new ones actually on the market um, they love full sun. They are gorgeous, obviously, in the fall. But all you need to do in the early spring is cut off the dead foliage, and you're, you're good to go. One, one and done. That's all it takes for sedum. Sedum Autumn Joy is really one of the most hardy garden perennials that you could possibly plant, and it goes great with other plants. Um, makes a statement. Looks beautiful even in the winter with snow on top of the seed heads. Um, and always has really long-lasting interest. 
These days, one of the most common flowers that you see anywhere is coneflowers, echinacea. They come in a variety of, um, every day you see new colors being introduced. They're super hardy. They start blooming like at the end of, the Ju end of June and they go all the way through the summer. Leave the seed head up after it blooms. The, the pollinators, the birds will love it. The finches love the seed. Um, they're very easy to grow. They come back year after year. You don't have to do anything to them at all. You can cut them down in the fall and, and again, one and done. They come in so many colors. So another really good hardy, uh, easy maintenance perennial is um, the Shasta daisy, Leucanthemum. This is Becky that I have, zone five through nine. It's really pretty with the white rays around the yellow center. Uh, they do tolerate rabbits and deer. They like full sun, of course. Um, there are a lot of new varieties, some uh, different heights. So Becky can be three to four feet tall and two to three feet wide, but there are some newer varieties that are shorter, so you could really get them in the front of the border. I have mine um, in front of some salixes to kind of cover up the bottom where there's not a lot going on. Um, but they're pretty disease resistant um, and I, they're great cut flowers. I have so many daylilies in my yard, hemerocallus. Um, they come in a million different uh, varieties, more and more every year. They're, they're new cultivars being hybridized yearly. Uh, I don't know if there's an easier plant than the daylily. Um, even though you only get one flower a day, um, each plant sends up tons and tons of flower stalks and spikes. Um, and they're, they're just so pretty. You don't have to deadhead them if you don't want to. I happen to like to do that, uh, but they bloom for, for weeks. You can do all kinds of colors. Um, and then in the fall, they really, they die, die all the way back to the ground and okay, just rake, rake off the leaves in the, uh, spring and you're good to go again. And they start coming up. They're easy to divide, gives you lots more plants. If you want to do that, they really do like the sun. They really prefer like six to eight hours of sun. They will grow in some partial shade, but you probably have fewer blooms. Um, usually zones like three through nine. Love them. Absolutely love them. Now, obviously, I'm not going super in-depth into every single one of these plants, and I could be suggesting way more suggestion, way more plants. Um, but I just want to try and give you some ideas for really easy maintenance gardening, no matter what your age. So another thing would be peonies. This happens to be an Ito peony called Canary Brilliance, but there are many, many peonies, uh, zones four through nine. They bloom in the late spring. Then you have the really pretty foliage for the, basically for the rest of the summer. Um, they do prefer full sun. They usually grow about two and a half, three feet tall. Um, they like moist, well-drained soil. Um, don't go crazy watering them. Really nice, sturdy stems for the most part on most of them. I have supports around all of my peonies. The Nothing breaks my heart more than to drive around and see people's peonies completely laying on the ground after it rains. So they do require some support, but that's the only maintenance they need. In the fall, you cut them all the way to the ground, and here they are in the spring. They're going to grow right back again. So let's take a little break from looking at plants, and let me show you another plant, uh, an example of a plant. So here we have um, a new deck a client has, and what I'm adding to cover the bottom of the deck is some spireas. Again, no maintenance. This person did not want to have to be bothered with plants on a daily basis. Some stillbees. A stillbee is a great plant for easy maintenance. Sedum, another great one. Uh, grasses. Um, we have hostas. These are hookahs. These are great plants that do not require daily intervention from us. Um, you know, yes, you want to look at your plants and make sure, you know, you don't have any uh, bugs or, or problems, you know, excess water. But for the most part, you have um, plants that really do not require constant intervention from us. So here is another example where I'm adding things like drops of Jupiter oregano um, underneath a hydrangea standard. Again, something that doesn't require any maintenance. Um, nepeta in this bed, cone flowers, things that don't require somebody to constantly bend down, deadhead, etc., etc. 
a couple of the ones that I mentioned. Um, here's a hosta. Um, hostas are great for foliage. They, you, the plant, the flowers are insignificant, but the leaves are beautiful. They come in a variety of colors and uh, shapes these days. Um, you do have to watch out for slugs, but for the most part, they don't require anything. Again, you cut them all the way down to the, f the ground in the fall. They come up by themselves in the spring. You can divide them. Grasses are great. Heucheras are some of the things we just talked about, come in a lot of colors. The grasses, very low maintenance. You can leave them up in the winter or cut them down. It's totally your choice. Very low maintenance. Now, another huge category that, frankly, I feel does not require a ton of maintenance, but does require some, um, is the hydrangea. Uh, there are a lot of different varieties. Some require more maintenance than others. Do not touch your macrophyllas, of course, but the paniculatas are, for the most part, very low maintenance. This is a serrata that we're looking at, a tough stuff hydrangea. Um, they don't require much, but they give a lot. They give from spring all the way through the fall. Who doesn't love a bleeding heart? <laughs> the Dicentra spectabilis. Um, they, they are so beautiful with their pink flowers. Actually, they come in white now too. Um, a really long lasting uh, perennial comes up first thing in the spring and then it just disappears. So it, again, nothing to do with it. Another great option is the Agastache and the Yarrow. Those are both great shrubs, Good long-lasting perennials, um, attracts pollinators. Yarrow comes in a gazillion colors, um, and you, you just can't go wrong with some of these. Now, there are other plants that do require a lot of maintenance, but let's keep it to things that are simple. And just like with our, our other bulbs, don't forget about alliums. They're great. They resist all the critters. Um, they give you flowers year after year with no extra attention from you. Another super easy shrub that I just started growing this year is the um, hibiscus. Um, and this is a perennial and um, it's four to nine, uh, zone four to nine blooms midsummer to early fall. Um, again, what makes this so low maintenance is in the spring, cut it down to like six inches and it'll regrow into this massive shrub um, with absolutely heart-stopping flowers, gorgeous colors, about three feet tall and five feet wide. Um, and there are new varieties, again, coming out in the, um, like the Summerific uh, series from Proven Winners. So these hibiscus hybrids are really great new shrubs. Maybe plant them next to some black-eyed Susans, another great suggestion, even though I do find my black-eyed Susans do spread. Um, I have Goldstrom all over, and I have a few other varieties. You might also try it with uh, Geranium Roseanne, another great easy care, easy maintenance plant that doesn't require any work. I'm sure you're all familiar with ladies mantle. In the spring, you have those really pretty yellow green flowers on that fuzzy leaf that holds the water really, it's so pretty. However, I find ladies mantle spreads. Um, so unless you wanna be pulling it out, it's something you might not want to plant. Um, if you do plant it, again, it's very easy maintenance, but give it place to roam because it's gonna spread. <laughs> but it's so pretty and it's beautiful in spring arrangements. So one of the last things I wanna mention, here's a, a Siberian iris. Um, plant things in the right place. Right plant, right place. You really can't say that enough if you don't wanna to have to be constantly maintaining it. Look for plants that have different shapes, different textures, so they provide some good contrast. Have some you know, spikes, some rounded, uh, heads, some things that are grassy and wispy. So good shapes, good textures, different foliage, and also put some nice bones in the garden. Put some structures in there, whether it's, you know, arbors or benches. Um, and don't forget to enjoy your garden. Um, there are a lot of different plants that we could look at. Again, think about color. Uh, this is geranium roseanne, a great Full all season perennial starts in the spring, <laughs> lasts all season. 
Um, you're looking for plants that are visually different from one another and different shapes. Like I said, some spikes, some balls, um, different different things that keep the eye moving around, but don't require a lot of maintenance. Um, if you have different leaf structures, you have a lot of interest without doing a lot of extra work. Think about underplanting. Um, so maybe underneath your spireas, uh, put some uh, daffodils. Uh, put some early season bulbs like the muscari and stuff underneath your hostas. Um, so you have a layered effect, but you're not doing extra work and you're not doing work year after year after year after year. Something I've not really talked about too much, of course, is container gardening. Um, you could have raised beds, which make it so you don't have to bend over. You could plant in grow bags or in containers. You could just plant right on your porch in containers. These are things that, again, if you have some mobility issues, can make gardening fun and enjoyable. So one last example. My client has a whole huge corner in the backyard, rhododendrons, inkberries, arborvitaes. What do you put in in front of it to put have some seasonal interest, but no maintenance? Spirea ogon, I think is a perfect answer. It's pink, um, it's white flowers in the spring, beautiful yellow green in the summer, gorgeous color in the fall. Put it with some heucheras and maybe some, um, stackies, lamb's ears, um, pop in some bulbs, uh, and you have a great four season garden with a beautiful dark green backdrop. So again, I could go on forever and ever and ever. Um, there are a million possibilities of things that we can consider. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this.